Alright, so today I want to talk about Prim's algorithm. It's not um, it's not hard. It's just the same as uh, Kruskal's algorithm. It's just it's a bit more tricky. So this is some things to consider. It's similar to Dijkstra's algorithm, if you're familiar with that, for finding the uh, the shortest path. And your resulting the, the tree that you get, your uh, minimum spanning tree, cannot contain cycles just like Kruskal's algorithm. It runs in big O of E log V, same as um, Kruskal's, and it can be uh, the, this running time can be uh, decreased to big O of E plus V log V if you use the uh, the Fibonacci heaps to implement the minimum priority queue. All right, so let's let's work through an example. This is the same graph that I use for cross calls. It's straight from Corman's book. But I think the example always helps. So let's work through an example and things become much more clear. So you can start with the uh, arbitrary vertex. In this case, we'll just start with A. And then, so this is how it works. So A can see two vertices, B and H. Okay? Uh, one of them has the uh, cost of 4. Another one has a cost of 8. And Prim's algorithm will select the least costly edge. So in this case... It, it's A to B, so we'll, so we'll select, we'll highlight this edge right here. All right. So now we can we go to B, and B can see uh, the vertex C and H, and we also keep track of what A can see. Okay. The more vertices you add to your uh, tree, the more uh, edges you have to consider. So now we have to consider the edge between B and C, between B and H, and A and H. Okay. And we select the least amount, least costly edge between those three. We'll do just go with um, B and C here. It doesn't matter which one you chose. Okay, we could choose this this edge here too, but we we'll just choose B and C. So we highlight this edge. So now, now C can see um, the vertex D, F, and I. So we have to consider the edges, all of these edges. So A to H. B to H, C to I, C to F, C to D. All of these edges you have to consider when you choose your next smallest, uh, least costly edge. Okay, so looking through this, we have 7, 4, 2, 11, and 8. We're going to choose 2 because that's the least costly edge. So we're going to highlight this path right here. Okay. And now we, we are at the vertex I. So now we have to consider... Uh, the edge between C and D, C and F, I and G, I and H, B and H, and A and H, okay? Uh, there are some other methods to do this, like a minimal cut. Uh, I just like to stick with this method, it's just easier, I think. So now we have to choose the least costly edge between 7, 4, 6, 7, 11, and 8, okay? So the least costly edge here seems to be this right here, the uh, C and F because he only has the uh, cost uh, the edge of four, uh, the edge weight of four. Okay, so we highlight this. Well, that's a poor highlight, but whatever, it does the job. So now we go to F and we have to consider all other edges that we had previously considered and even more. So now we have to consider C and D, A and H, B and H, I and H, I and G, F and G, F and E, and F and D. Okay, so this is where you, that's why it's a little bit tricky because you have to keep track of all these edges. All right, so which one is the uh, the least costly edge? It seems like the edge right here between F and G, because it only has the cost of the edge of two. So we will highlight this edge right here. All right, so remember there can't be any cycles in the graph that you um, the resulting MST. Okay, so now we go to G. And we have to consider all these edges plus more. Okay, so we have this edge right here, F and E, F and D, D and E, C and I mean, sorry, no, not D and E, F and D, F and E, C and D, I and G, G and I, H, uh, B and H, A and H. But looks like this edge right here is the least costly edge because it's only the the edge cost right here is only one. So we're gonna choose this right here. Alright, so now we go to H, and we have to pick the least costly edge. Now you see, if we pick, we have two sevens, okay, this, the number seven seems to be the lowest out of all of them, but pay attention that we can't choose this edge right here, see? If we choose this path, this will create a cycle, and we can't have any cycles in the, 
in the uh, Prim's algorithm. So therefore, we must choose the path between C and D, like so. Okay. Now, now we are at D, and we have to choose the next shortest, uh, ne next least costly edge. Notice we can't pick this edge right here, A and H, with a, a cost edge of eight because that will create a cycle in the graph. We can't have that. So the next uh, least costly edge to consider is nine because we have nine, fourteen. 10, 11, and 8. Any other would, uh, and if we choose any of these two right here, 7 to 6, we will create a cycle. So that's out, and this is out. So we have 9, 14, 10, and 11. Obviously, we got to choose 9. So we take this path right here. And looks like we're done. Because if we pick any other edge, it will form a cycle. And we have also reached all the vertices in this graph. So it looks like we're done and that's all there is to Prim's algorithm just watch it over again if you if it's a little tricky uh, practice it at home and you'll get it it's 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 not that hard it's just you gotta keep track of all the vertices and edges as you move through this um, graph